Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante Banks here again. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad to be here again with you having a redo. Yeah, we talked about this last week and I want to get right back into it because I believe this is the season for a redo. For some of you guys, 2020 has been one of the most difficult years of your life, but I hear God saying he's about to give you another opportunity, another chance to get it right. Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante Banks here, and I'm so excited to get right back into this message series with you. Man, thank you guys for logging in. Look, do me a favor. Right where you are, just just tell me where you're watching from today. If you can... Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante Banks here, and I'm so excited to be with you again this week as we get another opportunity, another chance for a redo. I Hey there, beautiful people. It's Pastor Dante Banks here, and I'm so excited to be with you again this week as we get another opportunity, another chance for a redo. I need you to type that right in the comments. I need you to type, God is about to give me another chance. God is about to give me a redo. Before we get deep into this message, if you were here last week, I'm telling you that this situation, this, uh, this message is going to bless you. And I believe that God has brought you here for this series of messages because he's about to give you another chance, another opportunity. Yeah, another way, another chance chance to get it right. Another chance to do it over again. And I know some of you guys think that your time is up or you think you missed some window, but God said he's about to expand your opportunities. Thank you, Jesus. He uses situations like this to expand opportunities. Do you know that God does his best work in the darkest times? Do you know God does his best work in the, in the, in the darkest of places? This is where your seed grows. Thank you, Jesus. And God is about to expand you. In fact, do me a favor and just start moving your elbows around saying, God, expand me, God. Expand, enlarge my tent. Enlarge my territory. Lord, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. God is about to give you a redo. And I want to get into this today because I believe, I believe that you're in the right place mm, at the right time for a redo. Let me say that again. I believe that you're in the right place at the right time for a redo. It is not by accident or incident that you're on this live today. I believe that if you're watching today, I, I want you to do me a favor. Whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing, I want you to stop doing it. Have a seat and I want you to listen because I believe that this word is for you today. And if you get this word in your heart and if you get it in your soul and if you get it in your Noah, uh, but if you get it in your mind, I believe that God is going to give you another opportunity for a redo. Now, before we get deep into it, you guys know I, I need some tools. So if you give me two seconds, let me, let me get some tools. Here we go. There we go. Okay, we, we need our Bible. We need our tools. We got to get into it. And I, I, I dare you to get your Bible out. The Bible says that his words are life. Listen, you need to be able to get into your word, get into your Bible. I'm telling you, it's going to bless your life. But listen, I want to I want to dig into this, uh, this scripture today. And I want to go over to Romans, Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Somebody say Romans chapter 12, verse 2. I need you to type this in the comments. I need y'all to be talking back to me today, okay? Uh, I, because I believe that God is about to give us all a reset. He's about to give us all a redo. But he, want, he wants to take us to Romans chapter 12. Again, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says this, and do not be conformed 
to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then, then, and then after that, you will be able to discern what is good and what is pleasing and what is the perfect will of God. Listen, as we get into this scripture, I, I, I want you to understand something. The Bible says, do not be conformed. Conform is a Greek word. Now, is, I'm, I'm going to try to give it to you. It's, it's going to mess me up, but uh, I, I think it'll help us. It's, it's suke madizo. Suke madizo. Okay, suke madizo simply means this. It means to copy or to imitate. Okay, it means to copy or or to imitate. The Bible says, do not copy or imitate. Oh, Lord, I think I can stop right there for a second and just let you know that you are uniquely and wonderfully made, that there is nobody like you on the planet Earth. There might be millions and millions of people, but there will be only one you. It can't be copied. It can't be imitated. It doesn't matter what, what they do. They can't be you. And I want you to understand that because the Bible says he who he he who he foreknew he also predestined that means that he knew you mm, he knew who you were he knew you would be alive in 2020 he knew what you'd be going through he knew what your financial situation was going to be he knew who your kids were going to be and he predestined you to be here at this moment so that he could get glory from your life now i want you to understand something god never does a thing that he does not intend to get glory from. Mm, yeah, I'm going to say that again. God never does a thing. He never puts his hand to a thing that he does not intend to get glory from. I want you to understand this, that God has intention and purpose to get glory from your life. That's why you don't copy nobody. Oh, hear me right here. That's why you don't copy anybody. You are not a carbon copy. You are one of one. The Bible says, oh, I might have to stop. Just take a pause just for a second from the redo so that you understand who you are. So that you understand what God wants to do through you. The Bible said that the, the hairs on your head are numbered. It doesn't say, I used to think it meant he, he knew how many hairs were on your head. He knew the number, but no, no, no. It means that he, the hairs, each hair is numbered. Each hair has an identifying quality. Oh man, you better hear me right here. So even your hairs are unique. Mm. Each one of your hairs is numbered. And so God never intended you to conform to what you see somebody else doing. Lord Jesus. But he said he wants you to be transformed. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do not be conformed. Do not be a carbon copy. I need you to type that and just say, I'm not a copy. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not a copy. I'm not a copy. Of, I am an original one of one. Do not. This is Romans 12 and 2. We, we still in here. We still talking about redo. He said, do not be conformed to the shape of this world. Mm. But be ye transformed, transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, do not be conformed. Do not be, do, do not fall into the trap of thinking like everybody else and doing like everybody else. You, you, you gotta see this as an opportunity. Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to help you right here. You got to see every obstacle in Christ, in God. Every obstacle is an opportunity. God is giving you an opportunity. It feels like an obstacle, but it's an opportunity. I tell this to our church all the time. Uh, Goliath is not your enemy. Goliath is your exit ramp. Mm. He is not your enemy. He is your exit ramp. What's that mean, Pastor Dante? It means as soon as you see something worth fighting, as soon as you see something worth fighting, God said, I'm going to use that thing to bring glory to myself and to move you to a new place. David did. David knew he was called to be in, a, in the castle. He knew he was called to be in the kingdom, but Goliath was his exit ramp. And I'm telling you right now that what you see as an obstacle is really just your exit. What you see as an 
obstacle. Mm, it's really just your opportunity to give God glory. I want you to take 30 seconds. I need you to, I need you to put some hearts and some likes on this. Remember, hearts are the new amen. I want you to amen this because before I get any deeper in explaining to you about your redo, I need you to understand that God is giving you an opportunity in this obstacle. He's giving you an opportunity to do something new, to make a new, oh Jesus, hear me right here, to make a new start, to do something new again. I'm, tr I'm trying not to get too deep into my message just yet, but I need you to hear me right here. This obstacle is not meant to defeat you. It's meant to be an opportunity for you to do something new and for God to get glory out of your life. I need you to heart, 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 if you believe that God is going to get glory out of this circumstance. All right, so do not be conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, if conf, conf, I'm not going to say this Greek word again because I'm going to mess it up. But if, if to be conformed is to carbon copy, to be transformed is a different Greek word. OK, it might sound familiar to you because it is the root of a word you may know. Uh, the Greek word for be transformed is this. It's, it's metamorpho. It's metamorpho, like metamorphosis. Mm, hear me right here. Metamorphosis. I want to get into this. In, 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 in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Verse 2. I, I'm telling you, he's the God of a second chance. He's the God of another chance. And in verse 2, it says, don't be, don't be conformed. Don't be a copy. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be, be ye transformed. Now, the transform has to do with metamorphosis. Somebody say metamorphosis. I hope if this is blessing you, man, I need you to type out this is blessing me right here. If this is blessing you, I'm, I need you to type out this is blessing me. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis means to means to change over. I want to I want to help you right here. Metamorphosis means to change over. Metamorphosis means to change over. Metamorphosis means to change over. Metamorphosis means this. It means to change in form or nature. Hear me right here to change in form or nature, to change in form or nature. I need you to understand that because God is trying to change your nature. He's using this situation. He's using this circumstance to change something in your nature. It to, to literally change the way you do a thing. And if you don't receive it right now, then you're going to be a copy of what last year was, a copy of what 2018 was, a copy of what 2019 was. When God saying, I want to do something new in 2020. And now I want to give you another opportunity to change. See, that's what we need. We need an opportunity to change. Another definition of metamorphosis, you know what it means? It means to go from immaturity to maturity. God said, I'm about to give you another opportunity to go from immaturity to maturity. Some of us, oh, help me right here, Lord. I need y'all to hear me right here. Some of us, uh, we never metamorphose. We never changed over. And God says, this is the season. This is the time. This is the moment. I'm about to give you a redo. I'm about to give you an opportunity to change in form. Oh, hear me right here. To change in nature. See, I need you to understand something. The butterfly is the worm's redo. You're not hearing me. The butterfly is the worm's redo. What happens is the worm has one particular life cycle. He has one particular life cycle and then something happens. He goes into isolation. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're dealing with it. He goes into isolation. Now, I, I love this because the, it is no set time that the worm will be in isolation. It, it can it can be it can be different for every single worm. It can be different for every single type of worm. You need to understand that because you keep saying, "Oh, it's time for me to come out of isolation." But God keeps saying, "No, no, no. I'm doing something. I'm fixing something. I'm changing something. Why don't you let me transform you? Why don't you let me metamorpho you? Why don't you wait a second? And I'm telling you, if you can learn how to wait on God, you'll come out with wings.
If you can learn how to wait on God, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up. Oh, y'all don't know y'all Bible in here. They say they shall mount up on wings like an eagle. If I learn how to wait, I'll get my wings. If I learn how to be patient, I'll get my wings. God said, I'm about to give you a redo, but first you might have to be patient. You might have to wait till you get your wings. God is trying to move you to a new place. He's trying to move you to a new level. And, 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 and some of us, we just have to be a little patient. Until we get our metamorpho. Somebody say metamorpho. It is the opportunity to do something again. It is the chance to do something again. And this is what I love about my God. And this is what I love about my God. That he gives us opportunities to transform. To tra trans means change. Hear me right here. Trans means change. He's giving you an opportunity to do it again. To change. To make another decision. Okay, you didn't make the best decision in that past season. You didn't make the best decision in that old relationship. You didn't make the best decision in that last season. You didn't make the best decision in that last season. But God is about to give you a metamorpho. Mm. Hear me right here. God is about to change over some things. I love that we got a God that don't mind changing. I love that we serve a God that don't mind changing. And, and, and I know, I know you're going to say, Pastor Dante, the Bible says that God doesn't change. That's right. He doesn't change in that he is always changing. The Bible says, behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Are oh, y'all not hearing me right here? He says, behold, I'm about to do a new thing. Shall you not perceive it? Now, if the word of God is alive and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, I'm in the book. If the word of God is alive and active, then that means he's actively always doing a new thing. You have to perceive it. He's actively always doing a new thing in your life. He's actively always doing a new thing in, with your kids. He's actively always doing a new thing with your finances. I know it's ugly sometimes, but he's actively always doing a new thing. And if you can just wait while he does his work, I promise you'll get your wings. I'm preaching good in here. I need to see some hearts and amen start coming up on the screen right about now. If you can wait. While he works, you will get your wings. We serve a God, a, a God who will give you a redo. He said, he said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, re, re, the, the prefix re, when you add it to new, it means to make new again. We're back to that metamorpho. It means to make new again. So God is the God who makes new again. That's why he gives us another opportunity. That's why he is the God who will change his mind. Hear me right here. I'm so grateful that we serve a God who will change his mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we serve a God who will flip the script. We serve a God. Thank you. That is so good. That is so gracious that he will give us another opportunity to start back at one. He will give us another opportunity to re, to re, to renew our mind. And I believe God is giving you an opportunity right now. He is renewing some things. He is renewing the way you think about some things. He is renewing what you thought was important in life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, because we had some other agendas. We thought some other things were important, but God said, no, 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 I'm going to show you what's important. I'm going to show you what's important. I'm going to show you that life and family and, and church and, and the Bible. I'm going to show you all these things that that, that are true and that are real and that are rich and you're going to stop worrying about things that don't matter anymore. I, I, two months ago, you had a calendar full of things that don't matter. God said, I'm going to slow all that stuff down and I'm going to give you a renewing of your mind. Now, a lot of us here, hear me right here. We want a life change without a mind change. We want a life change without a mind change, but nothing's going to happen new in your life until you renew your mind. Nothing's going to happen new for you and your family until you renew your mind. Nothing's going to happen new for you and your finances till you renew your mind. Listen, if you keep eating the same, you're going to keep wearing the same. Oh, I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help you today. Oh, I'm trying to help you today. I'm trying to help you today. Nothing is going to happen until you change your mind. Until you change your mind about, until you renew, until you metamorpho your mind. What does that mean, Pastor Dante? It means let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. 
See, I need to spend more time in his book. Yeah, I'm going to be cliche. I need to spend more time in his book than I do on Facebook. I need to spend more time in his word than I do listening to everybody else's words. I'm telling you that God has a word for you, but it, it, and it will transform your mind. But you got to get in the book. You got to get in the book. You got to get in the book. If you get in the book, you, you, you'll learn something. And, and I'm almost done. You, you'll learn something. You'll learn that God himself needs a redo sometimes. God himself needs a redo sometimes. And God himself will take an opportunity to, to get a redo because what he couldn't do through Abraham, mm, he would do through Isaac. And what he couldn't do through Isaac, he would do through Jacob. What he couldn't do down through Jacob, he 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 raised up David to do. But what he couldn't do through David, he, he raised up Solomon to do. And, and I want to explain something, that there is a lifeline that is happening. And if you're not paying attention, you will miss the fact that God took a redo. Mm, that God took a redo. The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void it was tohu vavohu and if you move down to about verse 26 the Bible says let us make man in our own image and likeness and let him have dominion over the beast of the field and all over the earth and everything in it. So the Bible says he blew his breath he blew his breath. He blew blew himself, hear me right here, into a tohu vavohu. He blew himself into something that was empty and formless. And the Bible says it, it started to take shape. But but Adam was pulled away by his own thoughts. Adam was pulled away by his own by his own uh his own selfish ambitions. The Bible says they're pulled away by their own selfish ambitions. And, and all of a sudden God needed a redo. But I thank God, thank you, Jesus, that, that, that there is a character that shows up in the New Testament and he is the second. Oh yeah. He is the second Adam. Somebody give me some hearts if you know who the second Adam is. He was born through 40 and two generations. He was born with, with no earthly father from a virgin mother because God blew again his breath into a man. He blew again. God said, no, I need a redo. I need another opportunity. I need another chance. He said, so I need a redo. And what I didn't get right with Adam, I'm going to get right with Jesus. What I didn't get right with Adam, where Adam was broken, where Adam failed, where Adam sinned. Mm, hear me right here. The last thing we hear about Adam usually is the first thing we hear about Jesus. It is the temptation of Adam in Genesis. That's pretty much the last story we hear about Adam. But the first story we hear about Jesus is the temptation of Jesus. But where Adam failed... Jesus succeeded. And what I'm telling you right now is that God took an opportunity to get a redo. And if God took an opportunity to get a redo, then God is giving you another chance. He's giving you another opportunity. This is your season for a redo. The second Adam said, I died so you could have another chance. I died so you may live. I died not only that you may live, hear me right here, but that you may live again. Oh, let me help you right here, that you may metamorpho, that you may change, that you may transition into this second life. Not, not that you may just live, but that you can live again, a life after the comma, which means a life more abundant. He died so that you could have a redo. Somebody say he died so I could have a redo. He died so I could have another chance. And I want to tell you something here, that if God took a redo, Mm, hear me right here. Then I believe that he's giving you a redo. Here it is. It's another chance to do it again, to try it again. I heard somebody say before that God was the God of the second chance, but I want you to know that that's heresy. God is not the God of the second chance because if, if so, my chances would have been over a long time ago. God is the God of another chance. When I was on my 33rd chance, he did it again. Thank you, Jesus. When I was on my 200th chance, he did it again. When I was on my 1,372nd chance, he did it again. And he continues to do it again. He continues to do it again. Some of you feel like you messed up. 
Some of you may feel like you're messed up and you cannot be restored or you cannot come back. And what I'm here to tell you, I'm a living witness that God is the God of the redo. He's about to give you another chance. He's about to give you another opportunity to get it right, to get back on track, to get back on course. And I'm telling you now, he is a loving and graceful and forgiving God. And he is the God of another chance. He said, behold, I'm doing something new. Let him do something new in you today. Listen, I want to pray for you. But first, before I pray, I, I want to I want to give three, three simple asks today. Number one, before I pray, number one, if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you. I'm going to ask you to repeat this prayer after me. Just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all my sins. Come into my heart. I need a redo. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I receive and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer today. If you said that prayer today and you believed it in your heart, I believe that you are saved with no equivocations. You don't have to do anything further. You don't have to prove anything to anybody. If you said it and you believed it in your heart, I believe that you are saved. You get another opportunity at life after the comma, life more abundant. He said, I'm about to renew, renew your joy. I'm about to renew your life. Thank you, Jesus. The second thing is, it's, it's really simple. If you say, Pastor Dante, I, I've been away from God. I've been away from God. I, I, I've been away from God and I want to redo. I want to come back close to God. Maybe maybe this uh, this quarantine time has awakened you to some things or made you, uh, enlightened you to some things and God's used this time to, to, to bring you back to himself. Listen, the Bible says he is calling you to himself. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Listen, I'm not inviting you to church. I'm inviting you to back to a relationship with God. If that's you today, I'm praying for your comeback. This is a comeback season for you. This is a renew, restore, redo season for you. And God is about to call you back to himself. If that's you today, just write, I'm back in the comments. You said, I've been far from God, but I, I feel like I'm back. I want you to just take a step of faith and write, I'm back in the comments. If you accepted Christ today, if you said that prayer for the first time or believed it for the first time, I, I want you to type, I'm new in the comments. You just say, I'm brand new. I'm new today. God is doing a new thing in me. Do you not perceive it? Thank you, Jesus. And I'm celebrating with you. The Bible says there is, there is celebration in the presence of angels every time one comes home. I'm celebrating with you. Third thing, third thing here. If you say, Pastor Dante, I, I, I've been outside of church. I've been outside of a church family and I, I, I haven't been in covering. I, I want to invite you to a, a relationship with this church, with God Chasers Community Church. Listen, I don't care where you are all over the nation. We have we have things that will help you. We have Bible studies and group track and, and G groups. And we, we're doing it all online right now. So you might as well jump in. You need a relationship with a pastor. You need a shepherd. You need somebody that can shepherd over your life. Hear me right here. I'm not perfect, but man, I love people. I'm not perfect, but I love people. And I want to shepherd you and I want to pray over you. Listen, I want you to have a relationship, not just with the father. Yes, with the father. But the Bible says that we need to be a part of the, the body of Christ, forsaking not the fellowship with one another. I want you to join God Chasers today. If that's you today and, and, and you said maybe uh, you accepted Christ for the first time, you said, I'm new. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You, you're returning back to God and you said, I'm back. But uh, uh, this final one, if you said, if you said, I want God chasers to be my home, I, I just want you to type, I'm home. I'm home. I feel home. I feel connected. And my wife and I, we will take you in. Hear me right here. And we will love you. We might not always have the time to, to sit and have dinner with every single person. But trust me, you are in our prayers. We care about you. And we are going to the Father on your behalf. So either type I'm new, I'm back, or I'm home. Amen. Amen. And again, if you're a God chaser, thank you so much for being a part of this experience. Listen, we're moving. You guys know this 
we, we changed it. We're moving to one service, one service, 10, 10. One service every single week. Okay, you can watch it back over and over and over, but we're gonna we're gonna consolidate our efforts and move back to one service every single week because we wanna see everybody on all at the same time. Amen. We wanna see everybody connected all at the same time. Listen, I love you and I'm praying for you. After this, you're gonna have an opportunity to give. Take advantage of that opportunity. Listen, I want you to have a bountiful blessing in your home but it starts with you renewing your mind, even as it comes to your giving. Renew your mind. And I believe God is gonna do a new thing in you. This is the season for a redo. How's that, baby? That was excellent. You did amazing. Think so? Yeah, you really scored. That's crazy, right? Yeah. It just showed up out of nowhere. Whatever. You ready to do your part? Do you want to? If you're not, if you don't, if you're uncomfortable, you don't have to do it. Yeah, I'm just sleeping now. Huh? I'm sleeping now. Okay, let me do it. No, I'll do it. Hey, beautiful people, it's Pastor Dante here. And first, before we get into this, I just want to say thank you so much to the generous people who help keep God Chasers working during this time. Listen, this COVID time has been difficult for a lot of people, but our church has been able to help so many different people, and it's because of your generosity. Listen, I'm so grateful to God for the givers and tithers at God Chasers Church. I'm I'm overjoyed. I'm standing on my head, just so excited and happy about the fact that you're still connected and partnering with us. And I'm praying a bountiful blessing for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for all of our giving partners. And I want to invite you today, if you're on maybe for the first time, or, or maybe you've never heard of God Chasers Church, listen, we're the church right here in the heart of San Antonio, Texas, with our heart for San Antonio, Texas. And we love to give. Uh, in fact, we, we, we made it a part of our church, but we say seeking God's presence and we're serving God's people. And we love to give. In fact, we made it a part of our church mantra where we just say we're seeking God's presence and serving God's people. This is an opportunity today for you to sow into kingdom work. For you to sow into kingdom work. And remember, kingdom kingdom work ha has kingdom worth. Are you with me today? Kingdom work has kingdom worth. And I want you to sow into the kingdom's worth today. 
Listen, whatever it is that you have to give, I don't care if it's two cents, if it's what you have to give, then we're going to bless it and we're going to ask God to give you a tremendous return on your giving on today. But I believe that some some of you have a, a boat breaking. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Some of you have a boat breaking. Break, some of you have a boat breaking. But I believe that some of you have a boat breaking gift to give this season. And I'm praying that God puts it on your heart to be as generous as possible. Listen, I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for each and every giver at God Chasers Church. Lord, you know where the resources are needed and you know where they were coming from. So I thank you that they're coming from the north and the south and the east and the west, God. But I also thank you, Lord Jesus, for the people who are sowing into this ministry, God. I'm praying, God, that you do a new thing in their lives, that you bless their homes, that you bless their finances tremendously, that you continue to do the work of kingdom through them, Lord Jesus, and you continue to bless them because of it. Lord, we love you and we believe, God, in, in the 30, 60, 90 fold, God, we believe, God, that you will rebuke the devourer for our sake. So, Lord, I pray, I pray a special prayer over the tiger. Lord, I ask that you come through supernaturally like they've never seen before, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, for every giver at God Chases Church. Lord, we love you. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Listen, I have a word for you. Stay tuned. It's going to bless you. Boom. That's tired, folks. Testing one, two. That all still work. Oh, I had two minutes left. How's that possible, though?